Social Science Lecture. I hope you all will be clear with some of the topics that we have dealt up till now. Uh, three chapters, rather this is the third chapter that is going on. I hope you all are reading the chapters well because this is your 9th standard and many of the concepts could be repeated in your 10th standard. Especially some of the topics regarding this geography as well as history. History, some of the topics could be there in 10th standard. So, there will be no civics the way I said before too. Uh, when we started with 9th standard in some of the chapters of 9th standard. One more uh, subject would be dealt by you all that is economics so we are not getting into that. Last lecture we started with the chapter called India, its location, its physiography and its geological structure. How is it? What are the types of landforms that are there in India? What are the types of rocks? The formation of rocks, the formation of lands, different areas, how many years it has been so that we can get to know what is the history of the earth. It is not just only about their particular country on an average geological structure, but here with the reference of India, we are only going to study about India's geological structure, that how many years it took to be like India, the way we have got right now. So today I will be covering two major topics uh, which would be the last topics of this chapter because up till now we saw how India's location is strategic in the world, how India is doing trading since long, since long time period, especially in say before, since 5000 years. India is doing trading with many of the countries of the world, with many of the countries uh, located in the eastern side as well as in the western side of the world. So in both the sides India is doing the trading. So how is it possible for India that it is able to do the trading with both the sides? So today we will be dealing with neighboring countries which are the neighboring countries of India with how many countries we are sharing uh, borders how many countries are neighboring countries to us with whom we are having some of the cultural relations, trading relations and you can say socio-economic relations. And the next topic is uh, geological structure of India or you can say geological structure of India since ancient time, how it was, how many changes have been brought by the geological uh, changes into the geography of India. If you are clear with the geological structure, then geography would become too much easy for you to understand. So let's study first of all about the neighboring countries. On an average, if you see the textbook, you will get to know once you will be having a map with yourself, once you will be having the world map with yourself or if you are having an atlas with yourself, do open whenever you are hearing this lecture. So at that time you can get an idea on your own that with how many countries we are sharing the border. First with Pakistan, second with China, third with Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Afghanistan. So these are the countries with whom we are sharing borders. With Afghanistan you may say that no, we are not sharing border with uh, Afghanistan but yes, nearby Kashmir, the upper side of uh, Pakistan, you can see a small border is shared by Afghanistan and India. It is kind of negligible then you can consider it as a part of India's neighboring country. Apart from that, other countries are also there in Indian Ocean like Sri Lanka, uh, we are having Pog Strait or Gulf of Manar between India and Sri Lanka. So that is also one of our neighboring countries with whom we are sharing cultural history because many of the Tamilians live there. So if you want to understand the history of Sri Lanka, you can search it out, you can find a lot of similarity between Sri Lanka as well as India. Next is Maldives. That is also like an island, that is a country group of islands. It is, it is situated in Indian Ocean. That is also one of the neighboring countries of India. Then Mauritius. Uh, recently only we have helped them. How have we helped them? You can also search about that because uh, nearby the ocean their oil tankers were uh, split or you can say spilled over in the ocean. So how have we helped them? There is a whole article given on the Google page. So you can search about them. How have we helped? It means India helped Mauritius when there were when they were facing ecological emergency. You can search with this name ecological emergency in Mauritius and how India helped that country. So yes, these are the some of the countries with whom we are sharing. Tibet, you can't say Tibet is not a country, 
but rather it is a part of china southern china it is also acting like a bolts roof so how it was how is it about which have already studied in eighth standard so this is what about neighboring countries of india how uh, or what kind of relation we are sharing with those countries individually that you will study in ninth standard itself but in history portion sixth or seventh chapter these things neighboring countries with them how is india's relation all you will study in detail so let's start with the geological structure and uh, how it is about india first of all what is geological structure geological structure means we are studying about the rocks which are found from that country we are studying about the uh, different strata or you can say different lengths land portions lengths layers which are there under the land or soil its formation how it got formed how many years it took to form then the formation of the earth and you can say the formation of that land area with how many years it took on an average if i talk about india the way it is right now kashmir is there in the northern side southern peninsula is there in the southern side we are having desert in the western side we are having lush green forest in the eastern side so all these things are the result of so many years the years in karos so the way we are having earth or uh, sorry the way we are having india right now with our cells that is the result with uh, of uh, last 5 crore years so with the passage of time many of the geological activities started happening in the interior part of the earth so before understanding that let me explain what is tectonic plates tectonic plates are also known as lithospheric plates so this is quite interesting topic if you go in depth into this geological structure see uh, if we see the crust of the earth if we see the upper layer of the earth it is moving it is moving over semi molten lava then goes on that uh, semi molten or you can say phenomena that is there under the land under the soil area that gets heated up many of the times and that heating makes the upper layer the crust area uh, in a broken way so we are getting a crust in a broken way in many of the different portion segmentation is there due to this heating process so due to that heating process many of the crusts of the earth have been divided into so many plates into so many crusts so those plates are known as lithospheric plates or tectonic plates which are movable which are variable in nature one may get Uh, under another plate one may collide with another plate or one may go away or drift away from another plate so drifting away is known as divergence to go under another plate is known as submergence or you can say divergence and uh, submergence and to see the friction is known as collision or transformation boundary it creates the image is there in your textbook whenever you will see your textbook so at that time we are having seven tectonic plates you must be wondering why i have written seven number here so there are seven tectonic plates first is pacific plate you can see this concept fully explained in your atlas too that how these tectonic plates emerged due to so many procedures under the earth that were going on that heating process that comes up that is due to convectional process convectional currents which are generated when heats are passed so that makes another body heated up so that has broken many of the crust into different segments in the different areas of the world on this earth first is pacific plate second one is north american plate third one is south american plate then comes a eurasian plate then comes african plate then comes antarctic plate antarctica that is a continent right now and at last in the uh, australian plate which india was a part of so on an average seven if you uh, want to write it down if you want to note it down then to you can note it down first one is pacific plate north american plate south american plate eurasian plate then antarctic plate then indo australian plate and eurasian plate so these were the african plate eurasian plate so these were some of the plates which got created due to many of the procedures which were going on under the 
uh, soil. So, due to this, many of the place, uh, plates were started drifting away from each other that has created many of the other water bodies or you can say a formation of mountains have taken place due to these procedures. So, whenever two uh, plates collide with each other, many new things may come up. Whenever one goes, another that has uh, made a mountain like shapes, you can say Himalayas, it is a part of that. When Indo Eurasian, uh, sorry, Indo Australian plate collided with Eurasian plate at that time, the Thia Sea was present at that time. So, because of that, because of that collision, one got under another plate. Eurasian plate and Indo-Australian plate got into each other and that has created lofty mountain range that is Himalayan mountain range that is a cold mountain range that is also known as new mountains because it has hardly been uh, less than 5 crore years the formation of Himalayas. Then comes the Arabian Sea when two plates were going away from each other, drifting procedure was happening, divergence was happening at that time seas, oceans got created. So that is a part of that particular procedure. Then if I talk about the other features, then we can say India is, uh, you can say, blessed with so many natural features or you can say so many natural things are there in India just only because of these geological structures which are present in India and India uh, which has been gifted by the nature, a lot of uh, nature resources abundantly by the nature. In the northern portion we are having lofty mountain range, then in southern portion we are having seas, oceans, bays, then in the eastern side we are having our deserts, we are having western hearts, in the eastern side we are having lush green forests, we are having plateaus, we are having so many mines of uh, different minerals, of different uh, metals, different ores are there that is there in the eastern side. So on and away then southern portion there is a peninsula plus eastern uh, western ghat. So these are some of the natural or you can say resources that India has because of the geological structure that India has faced. So many of the times it gives a lot of resources to the country. So this is what the geological structure is of India which has been explained in your book very beautifully. So whenever you see this book, three images would be there of divergence process, convergence process and uh, transformation boundary when two plates collide with each other. Then how this Himalayas happened, how Arabian Sea happened and uh, different natural resources got created in India. Right now we are utilizing those resources abundantly, not just only in primary sector but in secondary sector too. So that has given us a lot of money, a lot of um, wealth we have created by utilizing those natural resources in our own way. Now it is our responsibility that how are we going to take care of India. No doubt India's location is very, uh, you can say, uh, full of uh, profit for India. Then second one that was about geological structure that we studied and last one about the physiography. Different landforms that are present in India, plains are there, then how Ganga, Ganges plains got created. That plain is there between the lofty mountain range and the southern peninsula. So that is also one of the most alluvial plain or you can say one of the most fertile plains in India because many of the agricultural and primary sector related activities are performed in that area. Why? Due to the fertility of that area that we have been given by the nature. So plains are there, plateaus are there, deserts are there, ghats or uh, you can say slopey regions are there, then forests are there, mountainous regions are there, archipelagos, groups of islands are there. So on an average if we see about the diversity of physiography in India, landforms in India that is also abundant in India in too much quantity we have got. So on an average I hope you all will be clear with this chapter on three things we have studied up till now in this chapter. Location of India, how it is economical to India, how it is, uh, how it is proper for India and how
now india is having good relations with other countries of the world geological structure of india is studied and third and most important one physiography of india is studied because the next chapter chapter number 14 is totally dedicated to the physiography of india that you will need to understand thank you all